Hello and welcome to the calibration workshop. My name is Brian Lucena. I'm going to give a quick outline of this workshop. So we're going to start talking about calibration. What is it? Why would you want to do it? And how do you do it? Then we'll talk about assessing calibration. So we'll get into some code and some examples and we'll show how you can assess whether a model is well calibrated or not. And then we'll talk about some of the tools and methods for calibrating the model when it is not properly calibrated already. And then we'll spend some time talking about some more advanced topics. So to first explain calibration, it's important to understand the different types of predictions a model can make so that you can understand where calibration fits into, into that landscape. So one kind of prediction is a hard prediction, and that's where you're trying to predict the exact value of y given x. So in this case, your model is given a test data point, and if y is binary, it votes yes or no, and if y is multi-class, it's going to pick one of the classes as a hard decision. Now at the other end of the spectrum, you have probabilistic prediction, where given your test point x, you're trying to predict the probabilities across all the different possible values of y. So if y is binary, you're just trying to predict what's the probability that y is 1 or y is true. Um, if it's a multi-class problem, you're trying to predict the probabilities of each of the individual classes. Now sitting in between these two, specifically for binary classification, is what I'll call a ranking prediction, which is where you're providing a score for x, and a higher score means it's more likely that y is true. But the scores may not necessarily be meaningful as probabilities. In fact, the scores may not even be numbers between 0 and 1. So all you really know about the score is that when it's bigger, y is more likely to true, but you're not sure really how to interpret that as a probability. Or it may purport to be a probability, but we'll find that it doesn't actually behave like a probability. So given these three kinds of predictions, we'll see it's relatively easy to move kind of up this ladder. So to move from probabilistic to ranking to hard is relatively easy. If you have a probabilistic prediction and you want to convert it into a ranking prediction, well, you just treat the probabilities as scores and rank the cases by those scores. Similarly, if you have a set of scores and you want to turn that into a hard prediction, you just choose a threshold and you say, any case with a score above this, I'm going to vote yes. In any case with a score below this, I'm going to vote no. So those are very simple things to do. However, moving down this chain is generally not so simple. So if somebody gave you a set of predictions that were either yes or no, and then they said, actually, I, I want a ranked list, you, you generally can't recover that. Um, now, if somebody gives you a bunch of scores, and they say, actually, I, I want you to give me the probabilities that go with those scores, that is actually possible through calibration. Calibration requires that you have some data about scores and what happened when a case had that score. And so that's the process we're going to be learning about and using in this workshop. So what is calibration? Calibration is adjusting the predictions of a model so that they're probabilistically meaningful. And probabilistically meaningful, in this case, we mean, for example, when the model predicts a probability of 0.3, if we look at all the times that the model predicted 0.3 or, or pretty darn close to 0.3, in the long run, about 30% of those events should occur. If, if that happens, then the model is well calibrated. The probabilities are behaving like probabilities. If that doesn't happen, then the model is not well calibrated. So we all have that friend who says, I'm 99.99% .99 sure that this is true. And if you kept track of all the times that your friend said that, um, probably not the case that only one in 10,000 times that friend was wrong, right? So that's an example of a friend who's a bit overconfident. So we don't want our models to be like that friend. We want our models to be very precise that when they say 99% that that means 1 in 100 when they say 99, 1 in 100 that they're going to make a mistake. When they say 99.9%, .9%, that means only 1 in 1,000 times they're going to make a mistake. So why would you want to calibrate a model? Why do we care about these probabilities? Well, one big reason is when your action depends on a precise probability. 
And I'll give a couple examples of this. If you're issuing a loan, it's important to know the precise probability that the person is going to pay back the loan so that you can set the interest rate properly so that over a large portfolio of loans, you'll be sure to make money. If you get that probability wrong, you might end up losing money if the default rate is actually higher than what you predicted it to be. Similarly, in insurance, if you are going to issue a bunch of insurance policies and you want to know the probability that someone's going to have a car accident, if you don't get those probabilities right, you're either going to pay out too much in claims, or if you overpredict the probability of an accident, you'll charge too much for the insurance and, and your product won't be competitive. Another reason to calibrate is to assess the quality of a model. So we want the model to be aware of how close to one or zero its prediction is and for, for that to be meaningful. So we want it so that when the model says, this case I'm only 75% sure about, but this case I'm 95% sure about, we want to be able to take those numbers on faith that, that they are actually true. Another important way in which calibration might be useful is to assess the impact of a model via simulation. So imagine if I have, um, I want to, I want to tell my boss what the impact is going to be of this model, how much money we're going to save and so forth. If the probabilities that the model spits out are true, I can take a population, say, here's the population, here's what I would have predicted, here's how often I would have been true or false, and here are the decisions we would have made, and here is the, the impact that we would have experienced versus not having a model or versus having a different kind of model. Calibration also has a lot of implications for fairness and bias and so forth. So again, uh, one big topic nowadays is about models that are perform worse on certain kinds of people than others. Well, if the model is not well calibrated, it's hard to make those judgments. It's hard for the for someone to looking at the results of the model to say, hey, this model is less confident in these cases than it is in these other cases. Um, you would have to wait until you got the answers back and saw that, oh, I, in these cases, the model is making a lot more errors than in these other cases. But if the model is well calibrated, you kind of know ahead of time that this model is not going to perform as well on these cases. And a final reason you might want to calibrate is to recalibrate an existing model for either model drift, where things change over time, or for use on an entirely different population. So as an example, suppose you were working for an auto insurance company, and after COVID hit, all the accident rates dropped dramatically. You might not have enough data to totally retrain your model on, you know, the re on just the few weeks of data you had at the beginning of the pandemic. But you might have enough data to recalibrate the existing model and say, under this new circumstance, here are the new probabilities that are, here's how the new probabilities post-COVID correspond to the old probabilities pre-COVID. Generally, recalibrating a model requires a lot less data than building an entirely new model. So in general, how do you do calibration? Well, calibration is basically about fitting a function that maps that uncalibrated score to the true probability. And you need a data set of pairs of here was the score and here was the outcome to fit that function. And the different calibration methods really just vary in what kinds of functions they fit and how they fit them. And we'll also talk about there's different ways on which you might try to get the data set, set on which you're going to fit that calibration. So how do you get that data set of pairs of score comma outcome? Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss that over the course of this workshop. And most of my discussion so far, I've, I've focused on binary calibration. Uh, you might also want to calibrate a multi-class model, and that is more complicated to do, but we'll also discuss at the end of this workshop ways in which you could do that. Okay, so let's move forward and, and get into some code and some data. So uh, if you clone the repo at github.com, numerous resources, navigate to that folder and open up the calibration workshop one notebook and we'll start
playing around with some real data.